Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabe with the Hunter Fan TV. Back at you another video. Let the content of this video go ahead, smash that like button. Let the content of this channel, man, go ahead and hit subscribe. We got Ravens training camp daily. Every day we come with some Ravens news, especially during the training camp period. What happened? Who was on the field? Who wasn't on the field? We get to know it all about the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Now, starting with uh update on the guys who are on the pup list, right? Sounds like Stanley and uh Peters are doing well in their recovery. But they're just kind of bringing them along slowly, being, being cautious with them. Don't want to rush them out there too fast, according to John Harbaugh. Now, Harbaugh also said that Tyus Bowser is being cautious in his recovery, which is to be expected. I mean, he only tore his uh, Achilles, excuse me, in the last game of the regular season last year. I wouldn't expect him to be out there right now. Even I don't even expect Tyus Bowser to uh, open the season, you know, ready for week one. I expect him to be on that pup list, miss that first four to six weeks of the season. And then hopefully we can get him back and he can uh, produce for the Ravens, okay? Now, Gus Edwards apparently is a little further behind in his rehab. And um, we're not, they're not exactly sure when, when, when we'll see Gus. Now, Gus is a guy where I thought that he would be ready. Um, so maybe he's a guy who opens up on, on the pup list kind of unexpected to me. Uh, so maybe he misses that first four or six weeks as well. So we'll see what happens with Gus Edwards. Now, J.K. Dobbins seems like the most likely guy to return um, soon. Just to, just because he's apparently in John Harbaugh's ear every day, itching to play, chomping at the bit. Harbaugh almost has to tell this guy to calm down. We're going to get you on the field. Now, J.K. being ready to go was great. No need to rush him. It's only a second week of training camp. Uh, get him out there when he's ready to go fully. Now, he has confidence in himself and his abilities and his body. That's great. Awesome. But now, we need Harbaugh. We need the trainers. Everybody else to sign off on that. Uh, athletes always going to want to push themselves to the limit. J.K. is no different. Uh, so, I'm glad to hear that he's confident, ready to be on the field, but he doesn't need to be there just yet. All right. Um, what else? What else? So, uh, who was out there today? Uh, who was out? I'm sorry, out of practice today. Now, DuVernay, Brandon Stevens are still out. Uh, Brandon Stevens undisclosed injury for the fourth straight for the third straight day. DuVernay is out for the fourth straight day since that Ravens training camp uh, open practice with the thigh injury. Uh, so those guys will, you know. We'll see when they can come back. Brandon Steve's injury is still undisclosed at this point, so we, I'm not really 100% sure what's going on with him. Um, now, Boy, uh, Nick Boyle, Justin Houston, Josh Bynes all out today. Now, Justin Houston and Josh Bynes are almost assuredly uh, veteran days. Nick Boyle did have an injury before, uh, I remember a couple days ago, so that could still be it with him. And they could just also be cautious about Nick Boyle as well. He means a lot to the Ravens in their run game, so they want to bring him along, make sure he's ready to go for the season. Okay, now we did have some big injury news today. Unfortunately, uh, outside linebacker Vince Beagle was carted off the field um, earlier in practice, and John Harbaugh confirmed that he tore his Achilles. Now, Vince Beagle is a guy that he was making he's making some noise in practice, okay, with second team uh, defense and stuff like that. Um, the Ravens are thin at outside linebacker officially now with this injury. They were already kind of on the edge without it. But now with this injury, the Ravens are going to need to probably sign somebody. That's why they created that cap space. Uh, what was it? Maybe a week or two ago now. Um, because they knew that you never know what can happen in training. Can somebody go down? Somebody becomes available. Whatever the case may be, um, you're going to need that room. Now, Vince Beagle was unfortunate for him because he like he was in line to play at least special teams, and also get some snaps on the field when the rotation. You know, maybe when a guy like Houston or Dafe or Dalen Hayes needed a, needed a blow, you know, he could come in. Now, this first portion of the season, the Ravens are going to be like the outside linebacker unless they sign somebody, man. We'll see. Jason Pierre-Paul is still out there. We'll see who else can maybe emerge that they might want to sign. All right. Uh, ben Mason injured fullback. Uh, they didn't release what the extent of his injury was, so we'll see about that. Also, Ravens rookie center Tyler Lindenbaum got injured. Uh, I think it's like an hour or so into practice. Um, he didn't return. But Harbaugh said that Lindenbaum would be okay. Apparently, it was a run play or something like that, and he just got stepped on. Now, we know officer linemen. That could happen a lot. You know, a lot of feet uh, entangled in the same area. So, they're saying that it is just sore at the moment. Hopefully, that's all it is. He'll get an MRI, and hopefully, he can return to practice soon. Okay? Now, let's get to the offense today. Who did what? Now, Corey Clement is a guy that, with Gus Edwards being sidelined for a bit, has a, now has a, a chance to really make this roster. Now, now, Tyler Beatty and Mike Davis are two guys that are secure, and we'll see it when J.K. comes back. 
But Justice Hill and Corey Clement could be fighting for that last kind of running back spot. And apparently Corey Clement is making some plays, man. You know, one hand catch with um on a wheel route being thrown by Brett, Brett Hundley. And Kyle Barb, one of the Ravens writers, said that Corey Clement is a guy to watch this preseason. He could make some noise. So we'll see about that. All right. Lamar Jackson, man. Lamar Jackson is throwing the ball efficiently, throwing it well again. 65% completion percentage today. Um, also, they're saying that the, the velocity on his ball is well improved and is actually noticeable. Um, that's good, man. You know, not, not that Lamar Jackson really had any problems with arm strength before, but having that additional probably allow him to fit the ball in the tighter spaces and things like that. Uh, he's worked with Adam Mando the entire summer, obviously, for the last couple summers. And, you know, we're seeing that we're seeing the fruits of that labor, right? Lamar Jackson always puts the work in to become a better quarterback. So I'm not shocked at all that that work he put in is coming to life now. Um, the Raiders pass the game needs to take a step forward. I think they took a, a big step forward last year. They need to build on that. And Lamar Jackson getting better is obviously going to help that cause. All right. Now, um, who stood out today? Now, one of the first guys that stood out today, James Prochet. James Prochet apparently caught a 70-yard touchdown pass for the second day in a row. Uh, this one, this time, this one's from Lamar Jackson yesterday. It was from Anthony Brown. Uh, apparently, he beat Chuck Clark deep. And I'll take a couple things away from this. Obviously, uh, Chuck Clark deep in coverage is not something that we want to hear too often. All right, it's just practice. I know they probably will take guys around, but that's not something we want to hear too often. I'm just going to be honest. But James Prochet making plays is something that we love to hear. Now, all we need is one of DuVernay, Tylen Wallace, or Prochet to step up. And so far, we've heard from DuVernay. We've heard from Prochet. Tylen Wallace has made plays here and there. It sounds like he just needs some more consistency. And we can have one of those three guys really help out and be that third option. You got Andrews. You got Bateman. We need one more guy to really help uh, spread the ball around so we can... Um, if Bateman and Andrews are being keyed on, we need one more guy that can be able to take focus off of that and actually make a play. All right. So, uh, what else? Poche caught multiple touchdowns, just not the deep ball. He caught one in the uh, red zone as well. And speaking of the red zone, Isaiah likely dominated the red zone drill, 7-on-7, uh, 11-on-11. Seven seven, 11 11. Apparently, he caught three touchdowns a day in the red zone drill. He caught two of them on back-to-back -back plays. Uh, one of them was a juggling catch acrobatic. Another one was a jump ball going over top of somebody's head. And Jonah Schaefer, another Ravens writer, said that he's making it hard for the Ravens to keep him off the field. And I agree. This is what I said a couple videos ago. The Ravens like to bring their rookies along slowly. So if they're going to put a rookie out on the field, he has to dominate. Okay. And Isaiah likely so far, he's doing pretty well. We're hearing his name daily, making plays, things like that. If he has a bad practice, he's coming back the next day and, and putting it out there on the field and, uh, and improving constantly. So Isaiah Likely is the rookie to watch for, in my opinion, for this Ravens roster um, outside of like a Kyle Hamilton and a, and a, a Tyler and the bum, of course, obviously. So uh, Isaiah Likely, we're going to need him. He could be that third uh, pass catching option. So we'll see. All right. So two guys were dominating the practice, Proche Likely. Um, now, we spoke about Tyler Wallace a little bit earlier. Tyler Wallace didn't have, I don't say he didn't have his best practice because this is only one play, but he did drop a ball at Lamar Jackson, apparently put a perfect placement on. Uh, he dropped it in the end zone. Now, Tyler Wallace, um, it's like he's been up and down training camp, right? I'm not going to judge him this whole practice off of one play. I didn't see his name mentioned by anybody else, but... Tyler just needs to keep getting better. All right. Pro Proche and DuVernay are both third-year guys. This is only Tyler Wallace's second year. So give him a chance to get better. I'm not going to be down on him and say, oh, what's happening with Tyler Wallace? He's still immensely talented, even if he's having um, up and down practices. That's, that's to be expected. We've seen him make plays. Now he just has to be consistent with it. Okay. Now, we could transition to the defense with that. Because on that play, Kyle Hamilton had good coverage. And, you know, Lamar Jackson just put it in the perfect spot. He could, and, uh, you know, um, Tyler Wallace couldn't put, bring it down with it. But what I like to hear is Kyle Hamilton being sticky in coverage. Now, we know what he can do in the box and things like that, but if he's able to guard guys in the red zone, take away that kind of uh, that factor, that's good. Kyle Hamilton is going to be used in a variety of different roles. Uh, middle linebacker slot, strong safety. Uh, he might not be using the deep middle too much just because we have Marcus Williams, but he's showing that he if he's around the football, he can make a play. So I like that. All right. Um, Marcus Williams. Speaking of Marcus Williams, apparently he denied Justice Hill on a on a wheel route. 
Now, it's not the fact that he denied Justice Hill and Will Rogers. It's the fact that he's around the football. But you want to hear that from Marcus Williams. He was brought here to catch interceptions, just like Earl Thomas was, all right? You were brought here to make plays on the football because we need that, right? I think the Ravens have really stepped up in who they have as ball hawkers or ball hawk players on the defense. I think the Ravens are going to play a lot more zone so they get so their players can have their eyes on the quarterback and really uh, make a jump on the football. Kyle Fuller, right? Kyle Hamilton wants the ball. Uh, uh, Marcus Williams wants the ball. Marcus Peters, when he comes back, he's another guy who wants the football. So the Ravens have more guys on this defense this year than last year who say, when the ball's in the air, I need that, right? And that's going to help. I mean, even a guy like Tony Jefferson, who hasn't been known for that, but he's caught a couple of interceptions in practice, right? So that's a good improvement. Another improvement you want to hear, Adafi Owe had two sacks today in the 11-on-11 uh, 11 11 drills. Now, Adafi Owe is continuously having a good camp, and he's continuously putting the work out there on the field. Apparently, you know, it was just how he bent around the corner twice to get these two sacks. Uh, we need that from him, man. He's a double-digit sack guy as far as his potential, but we need that potential to come to life because the Ravens are going to desperately need pass rush. And the pass rush has been pretty good in practice, man. It really has been. The next guy, Brent Urban, making a play. Another He, he got a sack on 11 on 11s, all right? So if the Ravens can get pressure from inside and outside, it's going to be hard for teams to pass the ball. Like I said, I really expect the Ravens this year. They will still blitz some, not like the Wink Martindale days. But I expect to see a lot of zone coverage, a lot of guys with their eyes on the quarterback, and letting the pass rush go. So Hayes, Houston, Ajabo, uh, Bowser, when they come back, um, you know, obviously Adafi Owe are going to be able to get after the QB. You know, Travis Jones in the middle, Calais Campbell in the middle, Justin Matabike in the middle. These are a lot of guys that I have confidence in rushing the passer. You couldn't say that always about the Ravens. You really couldn't, right? Um, so I think this new system is going to allow these guys to get after the quarterback. All right. Um, that's pretty much it for uh, day eight of Ravens training camp. You know, unfortunately, some injuries did happen today. Luckily, Lindenbaum will be OK. It's unfortunate for Vince Beagle because he was having a good camp. Um, so maybe, you know, he'll he recover and maybe he'll be on the Ravens next year. Uh, it's unfortunate to have a season in the injury so early. Uh, we haven't even had the first preseason game yet. All right. But it's your boy, Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.